1-12 p.m. October 24th, 2016. I'm calling the meeting to order. And we will begin with a roll call with Commissioner Alexander. Commissioner Alexander here. Commissioner Sharkey here. Kevin Ludlow here. Lisa Elevich here. Jackie Kiley here. Tina Stanford. W. William Smith. Otis Cruz here. Okay. And from our office in the back, Talissa Freeman Robin. And from the Department of Corrections, the staff in the room. Tom Bailey. Laura Cruz. Thank you so much for joining us. I want to welcome our public attendees. We do have four individuals joining us uh, this, this afternoon. Thank you so much for your attendance. Uh, we don't often get public attendees, but you're certainly welcome, and we welcome you to our meeting today. Uh, just to let you know, uh, we don't engage in discussions with our public in attendees, but if you have any questions uh, after the meeting, after the public portion of the meeting, we'd be happy to receive them in writing, and we'll respond to them as soon as possible, if appropriate, okay? Thank you. Now, has, have the board members had an opportunity to receive and review our business meeting minutes of September 19th, 2016? And if so, are there any corrections or suggested amendments? And if there are, or if they're not, I would appreciate a motion with respect to these minutes. I move. I move that the minutes be accepted as presented. Moved by Commissioner William Smith that the minutes be accepted as presented. Second by Commissioner Cruz. Any further questions or discussion? All in favor of accepting the minutes as presented, please indicate uh, by saying aye. 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 Any nays for non-attendance, perhaps, at the last meeting? Abstain. Abstain. Okay. And abstains. Two abstentions. And the motion is carried. With respect to uh, old business, uh, there are just a couple items I, I want to um, refresh us on from past board meetings. Uh, the one item is that I believe on this past Friday, Commissioner Smith, we both received an email from a business analyst quality assurance person representing the Office of Information Technology Services with respect to our parole board criminal history report. And if you would just bring uh, the board up to speed with respect to the status of changes, sure. I'd appreciate it. Sure, there are, um, this is gonna be a multi-level uh, uh, changes that, that the board has asked for over the last uh, year or so. The changes that are being currently made include uh, the bolding of the convictions and the sentences. Uh, it'll include the uh, possibility of printing on the uh, legal size versus the regular size it will, paper. It will also include the, um, the chart uh, that gives a summary of convictions. Uh, those will be the ones that, that will be on this uh, update and then the others that we have they'll be, uh, they'll be including, including things uh, such as the, the sentence to Willard, um, and we'll have another opportunity as a board to submit what we what we decide. So they're they're having a um, they're rolling it out, uh, and uh, in the not too distant future they'll be communicating to the chairwoman what the uh, the, the actual uh, update is. So thank you so much, Commissioner Smith. Any questions about that ongoing effort? We certainly appreciate the fact that uh, the office of Information Technology Services is taking on this project on our behalf um, to make improvements to the records that we uh, rely upon when we're making our important decisions with respect to suitability for release to community supervision. I did want to uh, make a brief note 
with respect to our proposed regs. Uh, as you all know, the comment period will end in November, and uh, we will revisit those regulations for a vote after the public comment period has uh, ended, and we'll be talking more about potential dates before we leave one another today for that meeting. Uh, but I did want to just stay for the record, say for the record that um, it, it's been my belief since I've joined this, this body in 2013 that we all do our very best to follow the law. And um, as, as with anything based upon the law, our board is an evolving entity because our work is based upon the law, which evolves sometimes with, with statutory changes, uh, now with regulatory changes, and sometimes with changes in terms of interpretation by case law. Um, but I, I need to say, because I think it's important to say, that we've all done our level best, and certainly my impressions of, of your work suggest the same from you, all done our level best to follow the law as we know it to exist. And, and so I, I just want to say to, to the public that the fact that we recognize a need to continue to evolve our regulations um, isn't in any, any way a statement that we don't believe we've been following the law, but rather that we understand that as the law evolves, we evolve. And this is an effort to clarify how we will respond to the law um, and, and to, to give uh, some, some guidance to ourselves as well as people who come after us and serve and do this work on how to follow the law and how to uh, understand the interpretations that the courts have given particularly the Supreme Court of our country, the interpretation that they have given to our law um, so that we can do our work better. So it's to clarify and improve. It's not to say that we haven't been before. And certainly, anytime anyone is of the opinion that we've made an error in any of the decisions that we have been given the authority under the law to make, they have the right to appeal, and appeal they do. And our counsel's office can certainly attest to the fact that people appeal. They appeal our decisions. They appeal the decisions made by the hearing officers who hear the revocations, as is their right to do when they believe that an error has been made or an arbitrary decision has been issued. Um, and then, uh, in those instances, where even beyond an administrative appeal, an Article 78 action, is, uh, goes forth and a court decides that yes there was an error, then a new interview follows. So there's a process and I believe we've, we're doing our level best to follow the process. I thank you for joining me in that effort to follow the law and follow an orderly process. And I want to give a special word of thanks and appreciation to our council who came in at a time when we had a backlog of administrative appeals and uh, by uh, having uh, the staff of the, de the department assist us, we got through that and now we are more than caught up on our appeals where the law gives us 120 days to respond. We are in m most cases well within 60. And so nobody's appeal effort is being uh, denied or delayed. And I thank you for that. And I thank the work of, of your, your, uh, your staff, our attorneys, that, that make recommendations to us on what we should do uh, when someone makes a claim of error or arbitrary decision. So we're, we've come a long way. And, um, but again, we still have room to grow and to improve and to clarify our work. And I just thank you all for, for your, your weekly effort to do good work, and just wanted to make it clear for the record. It's not to correct uh, illegal behavior in any way. It's, it's simply to improve what I feel is, is good and honorable behavior going forward. So having said that, um, 
like I said, we will be uh, uh, moving to adopt, hopefully, once the public comment period is over. And we'll talk more about that at another meeting. In terms of new business, um, unfortunately, I, we haven't really had much time for training, so I don't have any training to announce. But I did want to remind you all uh, to do your online training. We hope to be joining our colleagues um, in the Bureau of Adjudication in some other training that will be offered to their staff primarily. So we'll get those dates out to you um, as soon as we have some dates. And you can join remotely from your home offices. So we'll be presenting that information as we get it. And if we can uh, prepare some other trainings before the end of the calendar year, certainly we'll do that and get word out to everybody. And again, those trainings will be offered as we try to do them most often by video conference so that we don't all have to travel to attend a training. Is there any other new business that anyone wants to bring up for the public portion of the meeting? All right, thank you. And I'm going to move on. And I want to um, uh, make a note of congratulations. Now, I can't give you their years of service at the moment, but I would like to read their names into the record, and we can congratulate them um, individually and hopefully maybe even collectively at a future meeting. There are several individuals who the Department of Corrections and Community Supervision, as we are all staffed under uh, the department, is doing recognitions, a recognition award ceremony, this Wednesday, in fact, um, at 2 p.m. here at the Training Academy. And we have several uh, Board of Parole employees who will be honored. And I just want to read uh, their names. Valerie Delarocco, who is retired, Daniel Berry, John Casey, our very own Talissa Freeman Ruffin, who started her career with the state many moons ago, and still when she was just a, a young, young, very young woman. Uh, uh, she will be honored this year. Uh, Steve Philbrick, Anthony Robler, and Terry Saunders, our chief of our Bureau of Adjudication. So we've got quite a few people with quite a few years of service in. Uh, our own Commissioner Smith, uh, haven't you just recently passed a milestone as well, sir? Or, or any day now we'll be passing a milestone? November 17th, okay. 30 years of service. Wow. To New York State as a whole. So we thank you for that. And I just want to applaud. <laughs> uh, people, people who do public service for any period of years should certainly be applauded. Um, and this is, this is not easy work. And people who continue to serve in public safety, um, I think, uh, are definitely worthy of, of recognition. So we appreciate them and the fact that they're serving at a period of uh, a milestone in terms of years that you would recognize. Serving with the Board of Parole, I think, uh, should not have gone unmentioned. So there's that. Um, in terms of other correspondence that I would like to share before we enter into our uh, executive session is another letter that was received, and I'll share it without uh, identifying the specific sender. This was received on uh, September 21st of this year in my office, and it reads, to whom it may concern. Two years ago, I was released on parole after serving 21 years of a 15 to life sentence for second degree murder. Soon after my release, with the continued support of friends and family, I attained gainful employment, purchased a vehicle, and renewed my license. I dated for a time until meeting my fiance, whom I will marry next summer. Two months ago, we purchased a house and are expecting a son in January. I regularly attend Alcoholics Anonymous meetings and provide outreach services to various drug rehabilitation centers. 
While incarcerated, the AA program provided a tremendous support system and has continued to do so for the past two years. I would like to thank the Parole Commission for allowing me the chance for a new beginning. I will continue to help others by sharing my experiences of growth and hope, respectfully. So um, this is just another nice letter. I promised you when I got them, I would share them, because I think it's important for you to know the difference that you're making in people's lives who are successfully navigating the world again after being incarcerated for many years. So with that, um, unless someone has any other notices, announcements, birthdays, I don't know, and I'm so bad at that and I apologize. I keep telling myself I'm going to remember to sing happy birthday to people whose birthdays are passing or near, but I never can get it together before the meeting. But are there any celebrations that we need to be honoring here? Any other milestones that we need to recognize? No? Okay. Then I would be happy to entertain a motion to enter into executive session. And at the close of executive session, adjourn the meeting. Is there such a motion? So moved. Moved by Commissioner Sharkey. Is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Elevich. Any more questions or discussion? All in favor of uh, entering into executive session and adjourning the meeting at the close of session, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Any nays? Any abstentions? Thank you. The motion is carried. Thank you, ladies.